Hey, I'm Teacher Margaret from the Bassin Room, and today I get to read with you guys. So I've got a few books, and I'm so excited to share them with you. So let's get started. So our first book that we're going to read today is called Over in the Meadow. And when I lived in California, this was one of my favorite books that I would share with all of my preschool classes over there. And I just found my copy today, so I'm so excited to share it with you guys. So this is called Over in the Meadow. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Over in the meadow, in the sand and the sun, lived an old mother turtle and her little turtle one. Dig, said the mother. I dig, said the one. So he dug all day in the sand and the sun. Over in the meadow where the stream runs blue lived an old mother fish and her little fishies too. Swim, said the mother. We swim, said the two. So they swam and they leaped where the stream runs blue. Over in the meadow in the hole in the tree lived a mother blue bird and her little birdies three. Sing, said the mother. We sing, said the three. So they sang and we were glad in the hole in the tree. Over in the meadow, in the reeds on the shore, lived a mother muskrat and her little ratties four. Dive, said the mother. We dive, said the four. So they dived and they burrowed in the reeds on the shore. Over in the meadow, in a snug beehive, lived a mother honey bee and her little honeys five. Buzz, said the mother. We buzz, said the five. So they buzzed and they hummed near the snug beehive. Over in the meadow, in a nest built of sticks, lived a black mother crow and her little crow six. Caw, said the mother. We cost at the six, so they cawed and they called in their nest built of sticks. Over in the meadow where the grass is so even, lived a gay mother cricket and her little cricket seven. Chirp, said the mother, we chirp, said the seven, so they chirp cheery notes in the grass soft and even. Over in the meadow by the old mossy gate lived a mother, brown mother lizard, and her little lizards eight. Bask, said the mother, we bask, said the eight, so they basked in the sun by the old mossy gate. Over in the meadow where the clear pool shine lived a green mother frog and her little froggies nine. Croak, said the mother. We croaks at the nine, so they croaked and they jumped where the clear pool shines. Over in the meadow in a soft shady glen lived a mother firefly and her vi little fire flies ten. That's a tongue twister. Shine, said the mother. We shine, said the ten, so they shone like stars in the soft shady glen. And that concludes Over in the Meadow. I hope you guys really enjoyed this book. It's such a sweet one. And the illustrations are just, I think, really beautiful. So, all right. So the next book we're going to read is called The Knight and the Dragon. And this one I actually just got from my mom. She sent it to me in the mail. So I am really excited to see how this one goes. So here we go. The Knight and the Dragon. Once upon a time, there was a knight in a castle who had never fought a dragon. And in a cave not too far away was a dragon who had never fought a knight.
One day, the knight went to the castle library and took out all of the books he could find on dragon fighting. Meanwhile, back at the cave, the dragon had rummaged through all the things from his ancestors and found some books on night fighting. The knight began to build some armor. So there he is. He's working really hard building all of that armor. Hmm. And the dragon practiced swishing his tail. Look at him, just like how we practice skills. Meanwhile, back at the castle, mm, looks like the knight is getting ready for something. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the cave, what is that dragon doing? Page on stuff. Here we go. Uh oh. Practicing some more. You can see that the knight made a wooden dragon and he's practicing on that, and the dragon made a wooden person. How clever. What are these dragon and knights going to do when they actually meet? Finally, the knight and the dragon were both ready and they sent each other a letter and set for a time. To Sir Knight from B Dragon, to B Dragon from Sir Knight, and then the fight. Are they really gonna fight? And there they are. Looks like they both fell over. They're back up again. Yeah, it looks like the dragon landed in the pool or the pond. And the knight landed in the tree. Silly, silly guys. Let's start the page. <laughs> looks like a princess is offering a book called the outdoor cookbook and how to build a barbecue. They might be having a meal soon together. Oh, look at that. Friends after all. So it looks like Dragon is barbecuing using the fire from his nose and the knight is cooking and they, my friends, have opened up a barbecue stand called K&D for Knight and Dragon. So K&D barbecue, I'll have to go check that out. The end. All right, guys. So the next book that we are going to read is Giraffes Can't Dance. I love dancing, and I don't know about you guys, but dancing is one of my favorite things to do. I love to dance in my classroom, in the bathroom room. I love to dance at home. So I am excited to read a book about, unfortunately, a giraffe that possibly can't dance. So we are gonna see what happens in this, but I have a feeling he might eventually. Giraffes can't dance. Let's get started. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Poor Gerald. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when they arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really, really bad at this jungle dance. All of the dancing of the animal. The warthog started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that 
That was elegant <clears throat> and bold. The chimsel did the cha-cha with the very Latin fill, and the eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. The very gifted dancers, it looks like. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming, and they soon began to roar. He looked at clumsy Gerald, and the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. <gasps> oh my goodness. That is so not nice. And that probably makes Gerald feel very sad and hurt. Hmm. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I am such a clot. So he crept off the dance floor and he started walking home. He never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. That is a very normal feeling to feel, my friend. Sometimes that is a feeling that we all feel and it is sad, isn't it? Poor Gerald. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky and the moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who had seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Ooh, I like where this is gonna go. Looking up at the moon, getting some clarity. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. Oh, Gerald's listening to the swaying branches. And I think he's starting to feel the rhythm in his heart. Let's see. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. And then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hoofs had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing around. Look at him dance, starting to feel that movement and the rhythm. Good for Gerald. He threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. And then he did a backward somersault and he leapt up into the air. Look at that. He's really feeling the music. Gerald felt so wonderful and his mouth was open wide. I am dancing. Yes, I am dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. So happy for Gerald. Look at that big smile. Then one by one, each animal who had been there at the dance arrived while Jerry boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we have ever, ever seen. So now they are all supporting Gerald, it looks like. Come around. And Gerald is just having a great time dancing. <laughs> How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Look at that. All that support now. And Gerald's still feeling the beat. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find the music that we love. The end. That was called Giraffes Can't Dance. And that was a great story. We saw that Gerald just had to find the rhythm in his heart. And we all have that rhythm in our hearts. That's really special. So our next book is Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? And this is by Eric Carle. And this was one of my favorite books growing up. So I'm so excited that I could share it with you guys today. 
So brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Let's get started. The classic. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. The beautiful brown bear. Here's the red bird. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. <laughs> blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. Purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. White dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. We see a brown bear, a red bird, a black sheep, a goldfish, a yellow duck, a purple cat, a blue horse, a white dog, and a teacher looking us, looking at us. That is what we see. The end. Oh my goodness. So that was called Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? So our final book today is Good Night Moon. There we go. In a great green room, there was a telephone and a red balloon and a picture of a cow jumping over the moon. And there were three little bears sitting on chairs and two little kittens and a pair of mittens and a little toy house and a young mouse. And a comb and a brush and a bowl full of mush and a quiet old lady who was whispering, hush. Good night, room. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. Good night, light in the red balloon. Good night, bears. Good night, chairs. Good night, kittens. And good night, mittens. Good night, clocks. And good night, socks. Good night, little house. Good night, little mouse. Good night, comb, and good night, brush. Good night, nobody. Good night, mush. And good night to the old lady whispering, hush. Good night, stars. And good night, air. Good night noises everywhere. The end. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining our ECS story time. It was so nice to read with you and I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. Bye.